it's cold. You can even see my breath. <laughs> All right, guys, good morning and welcome back to the channel. So this video is definitely gonna be different than the A86 content that you are used to, but this is gonna be a pretty cool and unique video that I think is gonna make for a great series on the channel. Everybody knows the hip and happening thing on YouTube is to rebuild uh, wrecked and salvaged vehicles. And I actually have made my first official purchase through Copart in a Indiana location that's somewhat local to me, not really, but um, anyway. So I bought something from Copart with the help of my friend and uh, we are going to go get it today. Now, when I get this vehicle and I bring it back and I show you what I purchased, you all are gonna be like, what the heck did you just do? Uh, this is ridiculous, but I, I promise, just bear with me, I've got some really cool ideas for it, and I think it's gonna make a really cool and unique build for the channel. So, without further ado, I gotta go grab my buddy. He is at home, I gotta go wake him up, he's probably still sleeping. Uh, and then we're gonna get on the road and go get this purchase. Uh, now, when I get to Copart, I might not exactly show you what I got, but definitely when we get back to the house, to the garage, we'll go over what I purchased, the damage of it, because I honestly have no idea how bad it actually is damaged. And uh, then we'll talk about the plans and what we're gonna do with it. It is a runs and drives, so at least I know the motor hopefully is good. And that's one big component of this purchase. So, all right guys, see y'all in a little bit. One eternity later. Hey guys, welcome back to the video. So they didn't quite go as I planned. I was gonna record the whole trip to Copart and make a little video out of it. But uh, you know, I was driving, didn't really wanna record when I was driving. And then when I got to the Copart location, I know some locations are a little weird about videotaping on their lots. So I went ahead and just decided I was gonna wait to introduce everything when I got back into the garage and here we are. So right over here out of frame is the vehicle I purchased from Copart and I'm just about to introduce it to you all. Now keep in mind, this is a little bit different than the content you're used to. It's not an A86, but boy did I get a deal on this thing. Now you all might not think so, but after I show you what I got and how much I paid for it, telling you dude, this Copart experience was pretty worth it. So, so without further ado, let me introduce the new project to the channel, my 2001 Honda Helix. Just look at it. Oh, dude, I'm so excited for this thing. This is so awesome. So let me get into a little bit of specifics, pretty much how much I paid for it and what exactly I got. All right, I want you all to pause the video right now and in the comment section below, I want you to type a number of how much you think I got this Honda Helix for. Now, you could skip forward and I'm gonna tell you anyway, but I'm curious as to think what you all uh, think these things are worth. Now, again, this is a 2001, it's a scooter, uh, so it's not worth all that much, but I still think I got a really good deal on this particular one. So the winning bid on this 2001 Honda Helix was $225. Now that might seem like a lot to some people who are just like, oh dude, that's just a scooter. But honestly, they're worth a lot more than that in my opinion. I guarantee you I could part this thing out and make probably double, triple, quadruple my money that I put into buying this thing um, because people really like these scooters and they need parts for them. But anyway, let me kind of show you what I got, the condition it's in, and justify my $225 bid on this particular scooter. All right, so starting in the front, first thing you're gonna notice is the front end of this scooter is non-existent. And the reason is, I couldn't fit this thing in my dad's truck. That's what I used to go pick this up at Copart uh, because the nose comes out to about here, 
right? So I had to take the whole front of it off. Now, with that being said, the panels on this thing are not in great shape. The side panels, the front, all that stuff scraped up because the previous owner, I guess he laid it down or, or something. It said front end collision and there's scrapes all along the side plastics and over on this side, there's a whole bunch of scrapes down those plastics too. But I've got them all in the house and I think for the most part, they are definitely repairable. But with that out of the way, we really start to see the overall condition of this scooter. And let me tell you, man, this thing, even though it's a 2001, this thing looks like it rolled off the showroom floor. Like, no joke. Look at this. These components in here, no rust at all. The horn's not rusty. There's no corrosion. The radiator has, like, what, 10 bugs in it? Maybe? Look at the tires, dude. The tires still have little nubs on them and stuff, right? Check out the mileage on this thing. 2,357 miles on this scooter. This thing, I don't even think, has had its first oil change, to be 100% honest. The seat's in perfect shape, no rips, no anything like that. The back piece, this whole back trunk was broken during the crash, but like everything lines up, everything's good. These panels are gonna have to be fixed up a little bit because there's definitely some scrapage. Like right down here, that's a good sign of where he laid it over. Same thing on the other side. There's a whole bunch of scrapes and stuff on this side. But overall, man, I mean, this thing was barely driven. It must have been in a dealership somewhere or in some some guy's garage forever. And uh, someone took it out for probably the first time and ended up wrecking it. All right, so I've been kind of itching to get into this scooter, so let's go ahead and do kind of a once-over on it. Uh, we're going to check the oil, we're going to charge the battery, I'm sure the battery's completely dead, and then I want to try to start this thing. Now, I haven't even opened up the glove box on this, and I haven't even opened up the trunk either, so there's a good possibility we might find something fun. And honestly, I, you can see the keys are still attached to the big zip tie that was on this thing when it was at Copart. Uh, I do want to remove the seat. I want to check the condition of the engine. I want to check the oil, which I think, let me check it over here, so, yeah, right there. We'll check the oil real quick, and then we'll try to start this thing up for the first time. So let's go ahead and get into all that. All right, so first things first, let's check the oil out here. Okay, there's definitely oil, and it literally looks brand new. Look at that. All right, let's pop the seat and see if we can find the battery. Okay, so I'm pretty sure the battery sits right underneath here, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, there we go. Dude, look at this. Dude, the engine looks brand new. Like, I don't see any rust or any really dirt except some dust in there. But it's been sitting in a Copart yard, so let's go ahead and throw a trickle charger on this thing because I'm sure the battery is going to need a little bit of juice to start this thing. So I think that's how you read that low. I'm assuming the battery is pretty much super shot. So we're just going to leave this and kind of let it do its thing. While this thing is charging, let's hop into the glove box and the trunk because I've really been itching into getting into those things. Ooh, there does seem to be some stuff in here. Come on. All right, so we got a uh, Honda Helix manual. Looks to be a little beat up, so I guess it was used at some point. And then we got a couple more things in case of accident instructions. Okay, State of Ohio Certificate of Registration. Okay, so this thing was registered in November, November 10th, 2019. So, I don't know if you can read that, but expiration date 11-1-2020. And then uh, the registered date 11-1-2019. So this thing was literally registered in no, like last month. Close that back up. All right, let's check out this trunk. Oh, cool. We got some stuff. License plate frame. You and your motorcycle riding tips practice guide. Got some little reflectors that go somewhere and a couple bolts. So nothing super fun, but let me show you all the trunk real quick. I don't, yeah, you can't really see it. 
That's a decent little trunk for a scooter. You can fit some things in there. Cool. Well, nothing real fun in the glove box and the trunk, but it's pretty cool to know that this thing was on the road and driving uh, probably about a month ago or so. Unfortunately, that's probably when it had its accident, but that's okay. That explains why everything seems sort of new, why everything, the tires look brand new, the oil looks brand new, uh, fluids look good from what I can tell. Um, so I have a pretty strong suspicion this thing's gonna start right up, hopefully, uh, once we charge the battery. It looks like we're at 70% there, so. Anyway, we're gonna give it a little bit of time until it fully charges, and then I'm gonna head back out here and uh, we'll try to figure out how to start this thing. Oh, sweet. So we are full. The battery is charged. So let's go ahead and put the seat back on and try to start this thing. All right. Oh, hey. Well, got some lights. Uh, and it looks like we got half a tank of gas. Now it's, I'm almost positive that that gas is probably pretty old. It might need to be changed out. You put this on run. And start. The head light just goes off. Oh, it's it's probably the side stand. Maybe there's like a safety built into this thing. Hold on. All right, let's try it again. Ready? The heck. Okay, let's see. Starting piece of play scooter on the center stand. Do I really have to do that? Oh! Ha ha! Maybe you gotta press that down. Press that down and pull the brake lock knob. Okay, that right there. So we push down, pull this. The electric starter will only work when the rear brake pedal is operated and the side stand is up. Uh, make sure the engine stops where it doesn't run. Switch on. Okay, let's try this out. Oh! Dude, look at that! It definitely started. Let's try it one more time. Dude, this thing runs. Oh, it's a little. Sounds a little weird. Okay. Oh yeah. Definitely might be having a problem. That's probably the bad gas, to be honest. Well, hey, I mean, I guess it started up. <laughs> Let me crack the garage before I fill this place with fumes. All right, so we have the garage cracked so I don't die in here. Let's try this again. Dude, I cannot believe this thing started. Honestly, it started right up. All right. This thing's heavy, I can tell you that much. Start it up. Oh, gotta turn it back on. Dude, that's so cool. Reminds me of the digital gauge cluster from the A86. All right, here we go. Okay, that's awkward. Oh, whoops. <laughs> A little bit of gas. Ooh, that kills it. Okay, so we're not gonna do that. All right, I'm just gonna sit here and let it warm up a little bit. Okay, so I just started it, and this is kind of working. Oh, dude, the power of this thing. Oh, buddy. I do not want to wreck this thing yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, bub. Oh, yeah, bub. Look at him move.
Oh, still think it's bad gas. Let's let's legitimately get that drain and started. <laughs> That's pretty dark. Let's see if it's reading any gas. Okay, it's saying I got a little bit in there. Get this thing to run, start. It's gonna take it a second. So can't give it a little bit of gas here. Hey, that sounds better. As soon as I give it throttle, though, it doesn't want to keep going. Let's try, let it run for a little bit and see if it gets any better. Let's try and give it some gas. Oh, yeah. Much better. All right. All right, guys, the idle's still a little bit funky. I might need to increase the idle, but throttle is responding very well, so I think the gas definitely helped. This is gonna be the official first drive of this thing. It's gonna be very short, but it's just a test. So here we go. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Woo! Sweet! Hey guys, welcome back. So, it's been a little bit of time since you saw the last clip. Unfortunately, the month of December has been super busy. Uh, I was in Reno earlier, got back from Salt Lake City a little while ago. Then we had Christmas and all the holiday stuff, and it's almost the new year. So I wanted to pick up the camera and kind of finish this video. So hopefully I'd have something to post for you all for the new year. Uh, real quick, I want to go over just the little couple of things that I did on the Helix and where it kind of sits now and what we're going to be doing in the next couple of videos for this particular project. All right, there she is. So as you can maybe tell, I cleaned her up just a little bit and gave her a quick wash. I'm actually in the process of ordering some parts. So we're getting the lower plastic pieces because they're damaged. I'm looking to see if I can find these for cheap or I might just go ahead and repair them myself. Don't really know yet. So one thing I did replace was the fuel filter in this Helix. And I think that was a big part of our problem. So here's the old one. And actually this one isn't even an OEM one. But since the gas was so nasty and gross, I figured I might as well replace the fuel filter as well. It looks okay, but when I put the OEM one in there and replaced it, it pretty much resolved all my problems. Got it turned on here and let's start it up. So I think the bad fuel filter was part of the reason why it was so boggy earlier. So replacing that fuel filter and putting in some fresh gas, even though we are running a little bit low, that's probably why it was a little bit hard to start there. But uh, yeah, just replacing those two things seemed to help out a lot. But I did find one more problem that I'm gonna need to address. Let me take you back here to the rear wheel. Tell me if you see what I see. You can't really tell, but that wheel is definitely bent, which makes sense because the main part of the wreck happened over here, and you can see the exhaust is all scraped up. So I'm assuming the wheel probably hit something too. Let me give it a little bit of gas so I can show you what I'm talking about under speed. Yeah, it's definitely wobbly. But like I said before, I'm already ordering parts for this thing, so it's gonna be a pretty cool project once it's all done. Now, if we get back over to the Corolla, not much has been accomplished this month. I know it's been super slow. The videos haven't been all that great. I think I post like once a month, maybe. But in 2020, we're really gonna get on this thing. The goal, I mean, I know I keep saying goals and we keep getting pushed past them and all that kind of stuff, but honestly, I wanna get this thing done in 2020 and drive it. So we really gotta get going on this bay, get it all done, paint it up, 
finish up the bodywork on the exterior, which is pretty much done. I think we just need to prep it for paint, really. And then the last thing I want to do is replace the rear end. I have a GTS rear that I want to rebuild and put in there. But then once all of that is done, and obviously the engine's put back in, uh, this thing's going to be ready to go cruising and drive around. So in 2020, expect a lot of content for this thing. We got to get this thing done. It's been way too long. I I've just been dragging my feet on it. It's tough working a full-time job and coming out here and working on this thing as well. But, you know, if I don't get at it, this thing's just, it's never going to get on the road. So definitely a lot more content to come in 2020. All right, guys, so I think that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I really hope you all are looking forward to this kind of unique Honda Helix project. I think it's going to be really cool. Uh, the plans that I have for it so far, we're going for a JDM build. So we're going to have a crazy huge windscreen in the front. All of the panels are going to be obviously repaired and replaced. And uh, we're going to throw this thing, or at least I'm thinking of it. I don't know. We're going to see how it works, but I want to throw this thing on bags. So I want to be able to get this super, super low and just post up at like meets and stuff. Got a lot of plans for it, but there's not a lot of information on how to make that conversion happen. So y'all are going to be learning with me, but I think it's going to be a super cool project. So guys, stay tuned for that. And regardless of what you all celebrate, I hope you had a good December and I hope you are looking forward to the new year. 2020, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on with this car and all the other projects here on the channel. I really want to start, that's kind of my New Year's resolution, is to really start putting out some content for you all so we can grow this channel. But guys, thanks for all of you all for tuning in and always supporting the channel. Please stay tuned for more A86 content and now content on this 2001 Honda Helix. And until next time, I'll see you later.